getting it on. Do I look really hungover today? I got bags under my eyes. Can you see that? I probably look worse in real life. Oh man. Okay, let's get this thing going. Versus two, Masters Cup. Good ready. Hello there, and welcome to the first game of today's action. This is the two versus two Masters Cup, and here in the East, we have Lucky playing as the OKW. His teammate is Photon as the Mighty Bear Knight. On the West side, we've got Bao Liang, the Master of Memes. With Von Ivan, the captain of chaos. This is the meme dream team. These are the guys you have elected to follow today. There was a poll in chat. And um, this was the team that got chosen to be casted by you, the viewing public. All 320 of you. The very first game of the day. That's pretty good going. And um, this, of course, is Vo. Farman's very good map indeed. And we've got... Us oh, I like this combination. He's going to go bullying, quite frankly. Lucky is looking for some rear echelons to steal the lunch of. The mother of Von Ivan packs him a lovely ham salad with a carton of juice and Lucky wants that and wants to push him off the playground and that's exactly what we've seen with those bully tactics of the OKW in the early game. North side. We've got um, just a worker battle. Notice by the way that Von Ivan's already chosen his first commander, not first commander, his commander, it's mechanized company. Um, so that'll be pretty juicy. Bao Liang has a few options. Armed assault, shock rifle, and there you see it. Counter attack tactics. There we go. And uh, we see coming to re to connect his gained territories. Lucky, bringing the folks grenadiers up to help. Stern pioneers have put a little bit of barbed wire down there. But the uh, riflemen are vaulting into action. A lot of courage, a lot of conviction. There we go, and nice um, start to, oh, bloody hell, nice start to the game so far. There's the Rifleman versus Fletcher, and a nice flank by Lucky. Von Ivan needs to see this quickly, of course it is early in America, he's seen it very quickly indeed, very responsive there, with not many casualties whatsoever, he just lost one more Rifleman on the retreat, but uh, could have been worse. North side's yet to heat up. I believe that Bao Liang is obviously a, a slow start with the penal battalions. Um, Oton does not... He does have an MG42, and of course it's there on the top side of my screen. I should have been able to see that. It's in a good position. And we've had a cutoff, taking advantage of uh, Photon's very northern positioning. Um, these combat engineers who are now going to go on a flanking maneuver. Meanwhile, the Grenadiers and the MP40s of the Pioneers push in and we do have um, an encirclement perhaps more um, riflemen on the field for Von Ivan of course now we've got his third squad out but he's just struggling to get into position um, due to the great play of Lucky and it can be said at this point that uh, I, w I would argue that both Thoton and Lucky have won at their respective 1v1s in the early game now we see however Bao Liang's late start with a special rifle company um, it's really Gonna start to take hold. M3 with Rock 9 Flame. Bro. It's the Special Rifle Command. Little voice in the back of my head said I'd said that building name wrong. Combat engineers need to be careful here. Grenadiers are doing a hell of a lot of work. That's not good. First possible squad loss of the day. Car 98 Ks. Couldn't quite make it work. Meanwhile, in the south, M3 is bullying. Lucky, so the bully becomes bullied, which is a great tale of vengeance. And oh, we did get those combat engineers wiped on retreat thanks to this Grenadier squad repositioning just to take them out. You can see both things happening there. The M3 takes the uh, south and then is now reacting to go north. Doesn't want to get within Faust range though. Does not want to get. Oh, there you go. 
Is he going to try and muscle out this damage? He's got a third of his health remaining. Oh, he did out-muscle the damage. Kubel's going to come to help out. That's very plucky. And another... No, no Panzerfaust. Kubel's trying to get some shots in. That's so cheeky. And there you go, the cavalry rifleman. Here comes the cavalry. They come to save the day. Elsewhere in the south, stern pioneers of Lucky. Great job of pushing away those minesweeper rear echelons, but the mine sweeping couldn't sweep that mine. A lot of suppression and health damage. M3, he's gotten three kills already, not too shabby. Oh, and look at this from Vaughn. This is an incisive player at his very best, using this as a sight blocker. You could show that there's blocking the sight. There you go, you see that little bit of shroud. I call it shroud, it's probably best known as fog of war, of course. The black stuff that means you can't see. Is another way to describe it. Enemy forces are securing our and territory. Here we go. I know this. Zwei und Spansig. The scout car. That auto cannon. Pulverizing the lieutenant. They always target the officers first. And. He lives through a hail of fire. Cavalry again saving the situation in the south. Kubel's doing a good job of capping as all the folks grenadiers back to the center as the 2 to 2 watches on. Yet to claim a kill and denied by the cavalry rifleman. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. Folks grenadiers watch on. There's no real point in harassing of, um, a retreat because they just don't have the killing power. 2 to 2 now being a good reconnaissance. What's this, sir? We've got PTRS penals from... I knew this series would be exciting. These guys are so gung-ho and tally-ho as they sally forth into action into two Panzerfausts, goes Bao Liang. Will he get past? Thoton did not react in time, did he? Still within range, perhaps? No munitions for Thoton, only 14. And counting. Needed, of course, 25. He's lucky, I would say, a little bit there. One, you know... Very difficult to measure what you can't see. Take care of the munitions of your enemy. What's this now? Very nice early Stuart by Von, Von Ivan. Not too shabby. Got an engagement in the centre. Cavalry rifleman. Getting blasted. Oh! And there we go. The Faust has gone in. Will this M3 survive again? Surely not. It can survive a couple more bullets. And there you go. Folks, Grenadiers can't finish the unfinishable. That's uh, M3 is the invincible scout car, it seems. And here's the light tank. Lucky Stuart Little. Oh, he's hit a mine, though. Some great mining by the Axis so far. The Axis forces. Ah! Oh! And he bites the dust, the Stuart. Couldn't disembark the crew either. No chance for a satchel and retreat there from Baldiang. The NA team perhaps uh, have a little bit of a disadvantage against the German team here because, of course, it is very early in America at the moment. They don't exactly know where Bao Liang re resides. Oh, failed satchel. Pioneers watch on and, and laugh. Got more two man grenadier coming to cap this territory. Elsewhere in the south, nice bit of suppression from the garrison. Lucky with the MG34. Just as well now building this Panzer too, Because they killed the Stuart, you know, it's going to really start to go in the Axis' favour unless the Allied team does something quickly. A little bit of a pan to the north there. MG42 of Thotons repositioned. Couldn't quite stop the Pioneers capping. But if you look at the overall battle picture now, not looking too good for those Allied boys. Rear echelon in the face. That rapid fire late war German machine gun. Well, late war is it? It's in the name. Just ignore me sometimes. Here we go, we've got the flame projectors of the 251 half track. More than enough to deal with anything the Americans have right now. Check out our oh, Bao Liang at least has the T. 70 now just arriving. Cavalry riflemen, only four kills. You'd expect them to have more on such a map that lends itself 
into these close quarter combat flanking manoeuvres. 2-2-2 two -two -two finds the rear side of the M3, but he's going to try and kite him. And there you go. He gets the anti-tank satchel in. Must have been at the max range. Ah, and finishes it off with the PTRS before it can even finish itself off. In the south, the gruesome twosome of the Panzer II and the 251 march into action. Those engines roaring. Looks like uh, the Allies are trying to take the north. They've forced away the Pioneer and leaving those territories ready to be captured. A lot of pressure exerted by the Axis forces, though. Botan and Lucky. It's not in any way lucky what they have done so far. It's been good tactics, well executed. T-70, a little bit of harassing journey there. Waiting for the second steward. They're going to be up against Panzers soon, though. Proper Panzers, not the Panzer II. And let's check out Lucky. Yes, he has, well, we know he's got mechanised. Let's check out Photon. Well, just in light mechanised. What battle phase he's up to. He's not gone to battle phase 2 quite yet, so no sign of the Panzer IV in the immediate future. Ah, there you go. Battle phase 2 is now attacking. Look at this plucky M3. Oh, the Pack 40 meets it. Is this thing going to survive yet again? One car, 98 bullets. All it takes to take it out. T70 reverses. Penal battalions lie in wait. Let's check out the south. I can know the Grandees are advancing, but I just want to see what's going on down there. Do they have a chance to take these territory sets? It's very important stuff. Stuart, trying to take out the house. Meanwhile, got Bazooka, Lieutenant, Rakettenwerfer combo. Not good for the Stuart. Well, Ivan's going to have to see this quickly. We need a reverse right now, Von Ivan. One more Raketten round. Hits the mark. It's going to be okay, though. And they come into position. The reinforcements on well, north side 251 versus T70. Possible bait for that pack. Where's the pack's position? Here it is, lying in wait. Stone Piney has been light, laying more mines. Cavalry riflemen have the range advantage slightly, I believe. No, I'm probably wrong. What? Must be a similar profile, actually. Max range shot there. Where was that? Oh, it was down here. What was the uh, Stuart thinking? Puma comes in and takes it out. A tale as old as time in Company Heroes. Puma arrives on the battlefield and demolishes those light tanks. It's such a known strategy and tactic of the OKW in any game mode at the moment. If you go for a second light tank, you're going to get Pumad. And that's exactly what we've seen happen. And the Puma now knows it's unopposed on the battlefield. It's one of those things where you hear something happen on the battlefield and it's exactly in a line of a left-right channel above or below you. So you, you flip a coin to decide where it happened and you go to the wrong location. G42 repositioning into the center. We've got security on that southern position. You can see that we've got salvage, of course, from the most chosen OKW commander in competitive history, Special Operations Doctrine, doctrine or SOD. You want to use a bit of British parlance there. I'm sodding sick of seeing that commander. Oh, nice harassment here. Pack 40 in danger. Oh, this is great from Bao Liang. 251's going to come to repair the situation, but not if the Pack 40 is stolen. We also have the PTRS Penals watching on. Pack 40 could get the ultimate vengeance here. Oh, couldn't quite get the round off. And because of that hesitation, he may suffer. Puma comes to remedy the situation. This could go horribly wrong for Bao Liang. Main gun destroyed. M3 Vanilla watches on as the T70 tries to kite the Puma. Is, is he going to get away? We've also got a penal battalion dying to that LMG 42 as the Puma takes out the T70, turns his attention to the M3, not before he gets AT Satchel. Does he have enough health to survive? No, he does not. Nearly takes out a few of his comrades in the process. And the M3, the invincible M3, proves his mystery is only that. And that mystique turns to fire as he burns up. <sighs> nice. A little bit of water for AE there. But just as they clutch on 
the embers to defeat. It burns their very hand. And although it may look okay, Von Ivan and Bao Liang to take into account what they've lost to get to this point. It looks a lot less than okay. Great thing about coming to Heroes, even with a, a unit disadvantage, if you stay in the battle, you can make a resurgence. But um, you'll notice that a lot of the Axis forces have a good amount of veterancy. A lot of fuel as well for Lucky and Photon right now. Oh, 251. Going to work. He's pursuing with furious vengeance and burning anger and hatred. And that resentment becomes burning corpses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On your feet, ladies. Yeah, 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 yeah. 50 cal in position. Always uh, very eager to kill those Nazis. I have, one. I have 10 kills now. That's a hell of a lot of kills. We've got uh, Command Panther Resident Sleeper um, comment in chat. Couldn't disagree more. The Command Panther is a, a virtuoso in tactical choice. How dare you suggest otherwise. SU-76 ready for action. SU-76. <gasps> oh, and here we go. The meme cannon. Sorry, let me get my voice in order. Oh, and here we go. The meme cannon has been constructed. Just as AE's voice cracks, we now hear the crack of that mighty barrel. Where's the target of choice? Oh, there it is! And it hits first time! Nearly every time. Bao Liang with a meme cannon of destruction, annihilating a grenadier on its first action on the battlefield. And that's how you get back into a game of Company of Heroes. You need to court Lady RNG to be on your side because you're going to need her and her madcap, insatiable appetite for random events. B, that B4 round, we all know, could have landed anywhere in my imaginary circle. But fortunately for Bao Liang, it was right on an imaginary target. Okay, those Grenadier skulls. In a battalions here, the 251, and fear those flame projectors. SU 76 finding its mark. The Panzer II is unimpeded on its reverse. Oh, and the Rakatenwerfer was lying in wait. I've just heard, by the way, that the Stuka bombing strike is an availability for Photon. So he has the Wehrmacht commander that can counter the B4 2 Three. Oh, what a shot again! Two shots! Two salvos! Two targets kaput! Bao Liang on form with his, uh, his accuracy there. Kappa. No munitions for the strike for Photon, only 33. SU-76 protects the B4. But uh, they need to turn this uh, rampaging RNG look into uh, territorial victory. Cavalry riflemen bravely run into uh, grenades there. Lieutenant versus uh, MG34. In no sense of cover there, but they're just doing enough DPS to cause issues. Good. Oh, well it was good. Nice PTRS salvo. Wasn't enough to force away the 251, however. SU-76 guarding the B4. Let's check on the B4s. Ah, it's got another round ready. Keep um, on target with that one. Wanna, I'm eager to see where its next target is. Kind of just pointing to the middle. Ah, don't know how I did that. Kind of cool. Oh! B4 times two! That's the second B4! Excellent. Oh, that's a B8! And you all know what that means. We've seen uh, one B4s. Oh my god, he's firing at the same target twice. Where's he going to hit? Is it in the base? Here it comes. Oh, there you go. He destroys something. Ah, that squad there. They died. Great stuff. I hit um, the side button of my mouse, which hid the UI. I'm very sorry about that. 
somebody could reliably inform me of who that is. It looks like a pioneer squad. So he kills a pioneer squad with his second shot. Great stuff. To move my keyboard so my mouse stops colliding with it. Kind of cinematic though. Ah, oh, flak placements. Thanks, Aerofield. My tiny little hungover mind could not process what I'd seen. You guys have a little bit more uh, time to process things, as you're not having to talk, which is very useful. Say so those that, uh... Oh, another shot, perhaps. Oh, oh, my God! Every shot is penetrating! Well, or in this case, decimating. Another one! Doesn't do much this time. What the hell is going on? Nine kills each. Eighteen kills. There's only been, I think, six shots now. It's ridiculous, this B4 usage. You can't put that down to luck. I'm sorry, but this guy is good at placing his B4 rounds. I know there's a lot of scatter, but he's, he's kind of having a great feel for where to put the, uh, the, the crosshair, you know? He's selecting well. You can't take that away from him. He's got a lot of practice. Ever since they tried to nerf the B4 by making it more random... Oh, this is plucky. Oh, this is plucky from Bao Liang. This guy does not give a... Who the nickel? He just goes for it. He's got balls as big as small planets, Bao Liang. The perfect partner for Von Ivan. LMG42 executes that squad. But they're not translating into victory point control, it must be said. 187361. Oh. Oh. Oh, he kills that shed. That was the command shed of the Wehrmacht army. As I say, everything is working right now. Second round in, perhaps. There it is. Misses this time. Could have taken out the 251. That's a, a rare miss for the B4s. And here comes the Command Panther. They've got that Stuka ready to go. The Command Panther thinks better of it. Have to keep an eye on their uh, kind of coverage here. They can, of course, just use reconnaissance overflight, but... You know, that's 60 munitions, so maybe he's going to wait for that. Doesn't want to risk it, perhaps. Oh, no, the Rakettenwerf is going to try and target it. Is he? Is he? Is he? Yeah, that's what he's going to go for. Let's, uh... Oh, here it comes. Oh, no. There he is. Stuka's dropping the salvo. And that's a B4, so he's just going to make another one. They're not very expensive. <laughs> What are they? Is it like 400 manpower, 50 fuel or something stupid? Somebody know the stats on that one for me. You can't actually see it in the casting of uh, UI. You have to like click on a combat engineer and it doesn't show what you can build as part of the commander. You know what I mean? Good MG positioning still. Oh. Is that a dead MG I hear? Yep, dead MG. There you go. <laughs> I love casting B4s. I, I, to think there was a possibility I wasn't going to cast this game. This is great. This is Company Heroes and it's most beautiful. Fantastic tactical gameplay by Thoton and Lucky. Playing with incredible precision. But it don't matter because he got a B4, yo! <laughs> SU-76 hits bet too, but it's not going to matter because there's now a dead SU-76. And it rams the house! Bao Liang's crazy. He just tried to run the house. Incredible. It's like a... Uh, Rear Echelon just tried to take on the Panther. Pretty exciting stuff. We are down to 100, points. 100 points remain. It's a shame that they couldn't translate this into success, you know. Oh, big shot coming in. Where is it going to land? Ah, uh, misses the panther. When you go from a target as mobile as the panther. Look at this, by the way. We've got uh, high munitions on two points. Look at that income. 52 income. And he, he doesn't even have a, a... Yeah, he does, yeah. He doesn't have both high munitions right now. Is this one too? Panther being around but it does not matter because they maintain control or well, they will regain control rather four to be time down right now 13 seconds left b4 
B4s leaving them wanting more. It's been great for the viewing pleasure of the viewing public, but uh, it's been not so great for getting this team authoritatively in this lead. Watch this, we've got recon overfly at Balion looking for a target. That must mean that the meme cannon is ready, and yes it is indeed. Why is it looking? Oh, there you go, another squad down. Just about caught the last second of that on camera. It was a grenadier. But as I say, if they're not... I mean, look at this 251. It's on paroling duty, just stopping them taking control that they need. This uh, Wehrmacht Panther with his excellent camouflage, by the way. I love that Panther. It must be said, however, allies have maintained the northern victory point for a while. And they keep regaining the centre. But they're in a bit of a, a pickle. Doesn't Von Ivan just do this so much? He, like, completely disregards victory point control so much of the time. And uh, instead focuses his, his mind on uh, trying to annihilate his opponent's material. And in this case, he's found the perfect partner in crime for that. Ooh, Panther Battle Group assembled. Let's see its target of choice. Bazookas go in. Jackson dares, does not dare to push in, however. Let's check on the firing targets. Ah, yes! Before still dedicated to the centre, I would have thought it would have repositioned to take out the support weapon. Ah, he can't see this grouping. That would be juicy. That would be very juicy. And... Ah, oh, it got taken out. Not before it got a shot off, though. So he gets taken out with the Stuka as it fires its last round. Oh, that, this game's crazy. So we hear the Stuka on our left channel as the B4 fires its very last round. We also have the Brum Bear in the build for Thoton. So here we've got the reconnaissance flares of Lucky. Just giving them superior position on the side. That, of course, is the major artillery of Vi. Really game. Trying to get back into the series. I mean, they've kept the Northern Victory Point for a while, it must be said. Uh, but look at how much territory the Axis have in the mid. 89, 88 and dropping. The Victory Points will start to ebb away as the Panther goes in for guts and glory. Phases through the frontal part of the Jackson gets a shot away, but the Jackson changes its trajectory as the penal... Italian gives covering Satchel advantage. Covering Satchel. I never said that phrase before. I don't intend on saying it ever again. But it makes sense. That's more like a garment worn in medieval time. Medieval time on the hunt. Oh, and that Brum there punishes them. That could have been so much worse had Bao Liang not retreated in time. Great positioning of the 50 cal, just keeping the pioneers at bay. Must be said that the uh, central victory point is still in Axis hands. We've had 77 and dropping. Still no third B4 for Bao Liang. Using recon overflights to try and get back into the center. And here comes the Stuka on the northern. Not quite doing enough to take it out, however. <laughs> That's one good C50 cal. Oh, but the Brum Bear. Oh, that's typical. Nazi German advances, they just make sh put all the cards in their favour. Very similar to what the US did actually, however. A complete overkill. There's a small position, we need two days of bombardment and aerial <laughs> strikes. That was OP versus that poor, poor, poor MG. Stuka and a Brum Bear. Through Hellfire and Brimstone. Hit the penal battalion, the Shrafniki. Men for their sins. Also, the 50 cal pushes up but just as they're about to cap the north. Of course, the Germans have heavily fortified that victory point. I mean, the Jacksons getting into position, but look at the victory point count. It's getting lower than 50. Panther 
the watch is on. Horses. Oh, it takes out the MG. MG34 that had been stolen previously. 251 making short work of those MGs whilst there's an engagement in the north. Needs to watch out. Needs to focus his mind on Ivan. There's more than one thing happening right now. And the Panther takes advantage. He's going to try and take out the Jackson. Big shot goes in. Jackson hits Vet 2. Panther's tracking him through the bushes. Takes him out. SU-85 and another Jackson take his place. Will the Panther get away? Of course he will. Thanks to that superior mobility. The Panther showing exactly what a Panther does best. Great shot by the Jackson, however. Will he get a follow-up? Hail Mary. No, he won't. SU-85 can't make work either. Let the uh, sounds of the battlefield and pay F for respects over Ivan and Baldiang's game one. Stuka throws six rockets in the sky. And so MG gunners are going to die. That was close. It's always a bit erratic as to how much damage a house can take before it crumbles. Into artillery for it. Brow bravely goes into play. Jackson SU-85 looking for a target. Shock troopers suffer a grenade assault. They reposition very well, but they still lose one of their soldiers. And then an incendiary grenade, the OP. Double grenade ability of the French grenadiers. Penal battalions and combat engineers crawl forwards into the firing line. The Rakettenwerfer even takes fire. Meanwhile, SU-85 goes hunting for the Brumbear that's had its engine damaged. Panthers in base, but this other one isn't. Got a good amount of health. Combat engineers looking for it. Rear echelons push forward to do some infield combat repairs. Jackson takes advantage of the situation. This is a big confrontation. If the Allies are going to make an historic comeback, it has to be now. And it's not going to happen, it seems. Although we do have north control of the victory point again. We do have central control. This has to be a last stand and nothing can go wrong now. There's no room for error. Let's change title cards over. Panzerwerfer now ready for action. 517 people watching live. If you've tuned in, you've, you can see all of these craters. We've had the most successful B4 game as B4s go. Because all B4s care about is killing. They don't care about winning. You know, you could lose the entire war and they'd still be happy if they got a few German squads. And that's kind of the tale of the battle. What am I looking at here? Where was that targeted? Is it on the centre? Oh, I'm such an idiot. What I do, by the way, is I look which direction the uh, rocket artillery is facing. But I always forget the Panzerwerfer turret kind of rotates independently of itself. So, yeah, I got completely... Uh, nothing died, though, it seems. Off three kills. Five kills. Yeah, something died. I missed it. There is no forgiving AE in this case. Maybe I'll, I'll beg for forgiveness in, it in the future. But for now, I just hope the punishment isn't too much. Oh! Big Brumbear round. Forces a full retreat from Baoliang. Got the Vet 3. 50 cal of Von Ivan. This is a gruesome twosome combination. The Brumbear and the Panther. The su 85s outmatched and outgunned. And we've got the flanking Wehrmacht Panther looking for a target. Here comes a fresh vanilla Jackson. su 85 turns its fire. It's got that superior Vet 2 penetration. More Stuka fire comes in. The Strafniki brave it. They're having to because they need to stay in this game with 16 victory points remaining. Here comes the OKW. Command Panther. Jackson recoils in terror. su 85 to reverse traverses its entire body to face the threat from the northern flank now as its Jackson comrade dies to its right flank. Brumbear bosses the centre. Baoliang's troops are taking heavy casualties. And here comes the Vet 5 STG folks grenadiers with those STGs blazing. Giving some real big problems, and that could be all. Cavalry riflemen bravely charge in in one fatalistic last charge. 
but against such superior firepower, their lives are snuffed out in an instant. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is game. Oh, hang on a second. For some reason, there's a WC-5-1 in the south, so AE's he's going to continue to cast. I thought I could just kind of watch the ticker go down dramatically, but it kind of got awkward for a second. Um, cavalry riflemen have somehow made it down there. And this is brave, but is it also foolish? Grenadiers have bossed the north. The center's still controlled. Two more victory points drip down to zero, and then it now is actually game. We are going to check the stats just so we can uh, take into account that fantastic B4 of Bao Liang. We have to do the relic shawl. Let's do a double swapsies. Then it'll show Bao Liang. There you go. Why is the B4 not the best unit? It was so the best unit. There it is. Um, only 135 efficiency. The hell? That doesn't seem right. It's, lo it's wiped loads of squads. <laughs> MG34 confusingly was on there as well. Not too shabby. Um, just checking the overview. <sighs> Oof. <laughs> oh, God. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Can I just preface this by saying Von Ivan's in my top three favourite players of all time? But that ain't a good KD, man. <laughs> oh, owie. Sainai did maintain a really high army value, at least. But uh, the Axis players were maxed out. And uh, to be honest, they're looking really strong. They may even pose a threat should they win this series and go on to face uh, Von Aston and Asilda. But you can never count out Von Ivan and Baoliang. And we may be seeing a, a ferocious Game 2 display. So um, hold your horses and let's see what happens. Versus two Masters Cup. There we go. Um, I think I can cast with a hangover. I did a lot of uh, singing yesterday, a lot of shouting, but it is pretty brutal. Try and get um, go and uh, talk to the referees. Make sure that. Uh, Oh, no, I know who I want to talk to. Here he is. Get him. Let's get him involved. Let's get the big daddy hello, G. Hello. Oh, yes, big daddy G in the house. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where's <laughs> my music? <laughs> Hit my music. <laughs> Hit my music. Hang on a sec. Let's do a full entrance for you. Yes, please. Please. I deserve this. And entering the ring at an astonishing five foot ten, the biggest benefactor in Company Heroes history, Storm Tiger Gaddafi. Oh man, I'm not gonna lie, I'm I'm mildly aroused by this entrance theme. <laughs> Thank you for that, friend. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Uh, <laughs> So, of course, this is uh, the Gaddafi Meister, and let's just try and set, up, set him up a little residential screen of some kind. Please. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be quite funny. I'll, tr I'll, I'll try my best for you. Hang on a sec. I'm going to crush Discord, put it over here a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to this one. Right, let me just make you a little... Can, just tell us what you thought of that game, please. You watched it, of course. Of course I watched it, man. Like, Balag is B before God. I love him. I love him to death. <laughs> I love that boy. You know what? Yeah. The the, the scatter that... Uh, I mean, this guy learned B4 by heart. He understands the scatter of that goddamn thing, and he hits every single time. It's unbelievable. How does he do that? It makes sense, because he could scatter anywhere from, like, 360 around where he clicks. But he's got a knack for it almost. Like, how do you have a knack for something that logically makes no sense whatsoever? 
Well, obviously, he spammed a lot of games with the B4, and I played with him a couple of times, uh, and, oh, yeah? and he, he he tried to explain me how, how he thinks about that, and essentially, he he understands the scatter on each and every uh, sort of uh, distance level, and uh, he the way he aims is like, he takes that scatter into consideration, and it's just unbelievable. He just knows the scatter by heart, and that's the key to the B4 usage. Um, I, did, I did say that on like stream, there's no way you can say this is just luck. Uh, because we've watched so many games of him using it, um, but, and also his predictability of the opponent's movement is just off the off the charts. Like he understands how how people move, and he aims considering the scatter and everything, and he just hits like it's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, we're never gonna say that uh, this guy is like the greatest player of all time, but he's certainly the greatest before. How it's a user of all time. Absolutely. That is his, like, I think, claim to fame, you know. Exactly. That's what, what he puts and on his curriculum vitae, probably. It's like resume straight at the top, you know. Well, in that's what you would ex that you would that's what you would expect from experts, right? We had Iron Roman back in the day spamming staghounds, and now we have oh. Bob Young spamming B Force. It's beautiful. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm gonna turn the Discord off now. Uh, it's been nice talking. I'm joking, but uh, yeah, you you. That's uh, just thinking of staghounds made me made me want to die inside. But so no. you represent basically a terrorist group. Is that what you're telling me? No, absolutely not. <laughs> staghounds, man, they're, they're uh, infinite fifty cals. How can you? No, <sighs> no, I'm a rant over, rant over. I'm fine. I'm fine. I promise. Calm down, calm down. <laughs> it's just a game. It's just a game. Why you? Why have you to have to be mad? <laughs> <laughs> But that, you know, do you remember that when you've got those, uh, what were they, stormtroopers, and you were trying to, like, sneak up to the Brits with your Panzer Shreks, yeah. and then they uncloak, and the Staghound just, like, suppresses them, and you're like, ah, that was my yeah. one chance. Exactly. <laughs> PTSD yeah. from seven years ago, bro. But anyway, yeah. we have an excellent tournament to cast today. We, we've had so many excellent tournaments in Gummy Heroes history. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, Storm Tiger Gaddafi um, has been a big benefactor of those, but that doesn't come without being a huge fan, does it? Oh, absolutely. I'm the biggest fan of Code 2 ever. Like, I live and breathe this game, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, same here. Same here, dude. Um, we're all big fans of this uh, tiny niche of the internet, playing Company Heroes competitively and watching it. Uh, it's, it's really cool that we get off on this stuff. Yeah. So, um, of I mean, I'm, I do have you on Steam. Of course, we're going to be... Well, we've got three minutes until we go live, uh, Sturm Tiger Daffy. I just need to give my voice a little...